right now, what we're doing right now is called a uh, preacher curl, but we're doing it with a tighter grip, so we hit a lot of the brachialis. Not so much just the peak of the bicep, but it's brachialis also. Come on. That's it. 15 reps. 15 reps. Breathe it out. Come on. That's it. Good. For a small muscle group, I always try to do at least nine sets. That's all we need because we're going to train pretty hard. Sure. You know, we may do four sets for this, but then everything else is going to be just three. And obviously, with any smaller muscle group, you don't need 20 sets. No. Your sets are generally cut down as it is normally, so obviously a smaller group is going to be even more so. Yes. And the brachialis muscle, for those who uh, don't know at home, Charles, is the small muscle we're here never between. Hit. One we never hit. The bicep and the tricep that nobody ever hit. You see a lot of guys on stage that have a big bicep, big tricep, and then their arms flat. You know, you're like, something's missing, but people don't know what it is. It's because of the brick out you notice that it, developed. And you'll notice it in two poses in particular, the back double biceps, and yeah. actually the front relaxed pose where you're standing like this, you, you where there's that it. big void right there. Right. But we'll take care of that. <laughs> this is a great machine to do this. <laughs> Uh, because you've got this handle system here, which actually curves up from the straight it position. It allows you to go all the way down into sure. it and hit it right. There we go. Good. Now has a great biceps. He, he trains your arms. Look at the break out on him. Yeah. He's coming out really nice. Yeah. This is right, right here where we're working. Also, at the top, we hit the peak of the bicep. Lock it in more. Well, Charles, I noticed that Adam's not sitting on this. He's actually got his legs back, actually leaning out over this. Is that by design? Yes, because once you start to sit, you end up having a tendency to rock back with it. But when you're leaning into it, all the pressure is right on the bicep. Gotcha. There you go. Woo! There you go. See, the contraction is much greater this way than any other way. When you when you sit there and you rock with it, you lose that contraction. But when you're leaning into the movement of the muscle, the contraction is great. Plus, you're specifically trying to hit this muscle group. Not the biceps in particular, so you're no. going to do that as we continue. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But we want the break out and also a little bit of the bicep. Sure. We, there you go. Come on, bring it up. Good. Lean into the pull. Right there. That's it. Hold the head up a little more. There you go. Right there. Squeeze it out. Ready? Hold it. Now they go. Girls, I notice Hold even on this exercise, even though he's got a grip on there, his grip is loose. He's right. only using because it. Because you don't need it because you got this bar here. That's right. It's curved. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. That way, there's not a lot of stress on the forearm. Yeah, but I notice, the I notice he's not white knuckling that no, thing no, again no. with the emphasis on the forearms, yeah. taking it off the brachialis muscle where you're trying to train. Yes. Yeah. All bicep. That's it. Come on, bring it up. Squeeze it out. Come on. That's it. Three more. Three. Three, three. Come on. Two. Come on. Come on. Last one. Bring it. Come on. Bring it. Bring it. That's it. Got it. All right. Good step. Now flex it. Come on. Hold it, okay? Breathe. There you go. That's it. Good bicep ball. Good. All right. Now what I'd like to do, I'll hit one bicep, one tricep. One bicep, one tricep. Why? Because if I keep hitting bicep, all I'm going to do is fatigue that muscle, and I'm not going to get a lot out of it. I'd rather switch it up every now and then, so that way I get a lot more productivity out of it. All right? Okay, Adam, how's that pump so far? Well, I can hardly move my arms right now, man. It's good, it's good. Just remember, you asked for it. <laughs> Charles, what do we got here? Right now, we're going to tricep. And what we're going to do is the decline. Well, traditionally, you do it on a flat bench. But I like to do a decline because I get a lot more stress on that tricep. And the contraction is much greater. So, you ready? Let's go. We start the weight. Now, Charles, can we do this with a big body part as well? Or is it pretty much relegated to small body parts where you're going from bicep to tricep? You can do it on a, on a big body part, but you wear a big body part out faster. Right. There's no such thing as you're going to do chest, back, chest, right. back. Right, that's what I was going to say. That's two big body parts. Okay. And you won't eat you know, okay. Forget, <laughs> Forget it. it. <laughs> Forget it. OK. That goes in. Down to the forehead, now toward my hand. There you go. Now you have the stress wear on your tricep. That's it, come on, bring it up. Good, at the top you wanna squeeze it. Hold it, there you go. Hold it, that's it, come on. Good, come on. Bring it up, give me 12, give me 12 reps. Good, come on. That's 
fit. One. So we're on a decline. Yes. Uh, you've also got, he's obviously on a decline angle. He's also angling the bar back. Right, this is me. not a skull crusher. This no. is a French curl. Big More difference. French curl, yes. Big difference. A skull crusher traditionally bring it to comes from about the bridge of your nose straight up. But when a French curl comes off the back of your head and on an angle. But you got to understand, when you do it this way, you put more stress on your tricep and less when you what? Joints. On the joints. Yeah. Very important. There you go. Come on. Good. Good. Come on. That's it. That's it. Good. Come on. Come on. Take it up. Mm -hmm. Two more. Next one coming up. Bring it to me. Woo. Woo. All right, 70 in the first set, jumped it up, 85 in the second. You going up for a third? Yeah, we're going up. We keep going up until the form starts to, you know, you don't want the form to suffer. Right. You know, that's it. If, you, if your form starts to suffer, check your ego, leave it outside, make sure <laughs> right. you don't hurt yourself. You Adam, know you mean? notice the difference between doing this on the decline and doing it on a flat bunch? Yeah, I mean, it, you just feel a constant pressure in your triceps. But the, the, the sweet thing is about this exercise, it's just your triceps. Right. I don't feel it in my shoulders. Sure. I don't feel it in my elbows and I certainly don't feel it in my wrist. It's all in the tricep, you know. As Charles said, he knows what he's doing, man. That's why I trust him. That's why I've done this a few times, I'm thinking. Once or twice, man. Once or twice. <laughs> okay, what's the jump, Charles? We went from 70, 85, now we're up another 10 pounds, yeah. 95 pounds. I just want to emphasize once again, when you're just doing these, he is not bringing the bar straight up and down. Oh, He's no. keeping it on an angle, angle yes. constantly keeping tension on the triceps. Yes, that, that from start to finish, there's tension. You never, there's never one time that muscle is going to relax. Whereas the all crushes, what happens? You take a little pressure off. Sure, you get that little little rest pause at the top. Now, is there any instance, I notice you have a close grip on the easy curl bar. Is there any instance that you would use a wide grip on here? I mean, you can go wide and it'll make it a lot thicker, but then you take the chance of an injury because sure. then you open yourself up, now that elbow is going to get a little pain. Whether you use a straight bar, easy curl bar, whatever, it's going to pull up more stress there. But you bring it, keep your elbows in, sure. it takes stress off that tendon that's running through. So, and you're using the grip to keep the elbows in. I've noticed in your training, Charles, uh, you're adamant about not forcing the elbows or the knees or anything into a particular position. You're pretty much letting them go where they want to go. You have to. That way you avoid that. A lot of people want to force the thing. Right. Now, you're forcing that muscle to act unnatural. In order to go natural, it's going to always flare out just a little. So I don't mind it flaring out a little. I, I'm not going to let you do this right, because now of course. it's a whole different exercise. But if it's going to flare a little, let it flare a little. But as you go up, bring it back in to where it should be. Well, one thing I've seen over the years is trainers actually, uh, like somebody's here doing a behind the neck press, and they're actually holding their elbows in. Wrong. Can't do it. You couldn't be more wrong. I mean, you Can't are forcing the elbow and the shoulder into a particular position right. that's not a natural position. And that's an injury waiting to happen. Exactly right. How's it feeling, Adam? Feel good, right. feel good. Come on. Bring it to me, bring it to me. Right here. Bring it to me. Right here. Bring it to me. We'll help, we'll help. Come on. One more, one more. Ready? Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. There you go. Charles, I noticed you didn't go up on the last set. Is that by design, or are you just purely going by where he's, his strength is at? I'm watching him. If he's going to fatigue a little sooner, I can't take him up. Right. So if I take him up, I'm going to do the work. His muscles not going to get anything out of it. Sure. So you have a you have a general idea of where he trains because obviously he has trained under you before. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, but you're always kind of uh, uh, going by the day, so to say, or you know the uh, weeder instinctive training principle as we all come to know it. You know, look, look at it this way. I can push him hard as I want, but what's going to happen? He's going to fatigue, his muscles are going to fail, he's going to get an injury. 
but if I watch him and just instinctively watch how he trains, it's easier to gauge what he can do and what he can't do. One thing I've noticed with, with all great trainers, they, they rarely write anything down. Uh, they have a general idea, but like you say, you're going to kind of go with the flow. If he's strong one day, you're going to go with it. If he's a little weaker, uh, maybe as the carbs are coming down closer to the competition, you're going to take that assessment that there's a reason why the weights come on and off. Right. Well, I mean, with, with certain individuals, you know what their strength and weaknesses are. So you watch them and observe how they're training. You know when they're fatiguing, sure. you can't go up. And why would I write it down from day to day? That's going to change depending on how many calories That's you're right. taking in that day or whatever. A lot of different you factors. Know, yeah, cardio, you know, could be sure. didn't sleep well that night, whatever. So I just watch him. We go by what he can do for it. Like you said, uh, his anchor principle sure. is very good. That is true. Okay, what's next? Back to biceps? Uh, we go back to biceps. And what I want to do this time, you know, I'm going to do what we uh, call prone curl. It's a new machine also. Prone Ready? curl. Let's do it. So right here, what we're going to do is to call a prone curl. And if you notice, he's going to sit very low so his arms are parallel. And we're going to pull into our biceps. We're not going to force him to have way above where he's just doing like a elbow curl. We don't want to do that. I want to do a strict prone curl. Here you we go. go. If you notice his hands are wider yep. because we're working for more thickness here now. There you go. Come on. Rain in. I push your elbow slightly and just tap. Me. There you go. Now you're on top of it. Work for that thickness. If you notice on these, you can always go free grip because mm -hmm. it doesn't bother you. You know, on the black like barbell or dumbbell, we gotta really grip that bar a little tighter. So here we can open the hand up, keep the stress off the forearm, put more on the bicep. There you go. Last two. Last one. That's good. Well, Charles, we, we talk a lot about, again, de-emphasizing uh, certain body parts, again, taking the grip and, and loosening it up. Uh, obviously, by using a machine, like you said, we're able to do that much more than a barbell. Uh, but I can't emphasize enough that when you're bodybuilding, and there is a difference between bodybuilding, weightlifting, powerlifting, Olympic lifting, uh, you're just trying to train the biceps. You're not trying to break world records uh, by, by putting, you know, 40 more pounds on here and gripping this and curling the wrist so that the, the forearm comes into play. You're not anything about that. No, you know, it's not about how strong you are, because once you're on that stage, they look at the physique. They want to see what your physique looks like. Right. And so if we can do less weight and avoid what injury, we're that much ahead of the game. So there's no round in bodybuilding, you have to curl a barbell no. or bench press. No round at all. <laughs> it's not like the old Iron Man where you do power lifting right, and right, bodybuilding. Right, right, right. Back in the uh, 40s. Here we go. Back when you first started competing. <laughs> Two down. Try to keep your shoulders out. Mm -hmm. There you go. Good. You know it's them biceps are really pumping up fast. That's Come on. Good. One more. Oh, that's all right. He's got one. Yeah, like a true right. champ. Charles, two things I'm noticing is, is Adam rides in pain over here. Uh, one, and this is a technique I picked up years ago that I stole from you, of course, uh, was keeping the wrist back. Slightly back. Why? Slightly back. Take the stress off what? Take the stress off the forearm. Yeah. So always keeping that nice flat palm mm -hmm. and, and curling it up. Yeah. And obviously, as you mentioned, he's got his legs back off the machine again, so he's not rocking back. Right. He's yeah. actually pitched into the machine. He's not using all the other secondary and third, you know, muscles he can use. He's just using primary muscles. And his range of motion we would consider full range, even though he's not completely straightening out the bicep. Understand this, when you completely straighten it all the way out, what are you doing to those tendons and stuff now? You gotta be very careful. Slightly bent bring it back in. This is complete. This here, you're hyperextending the elbow, you're causing other injuries there. Right, because you want to keep the muscle in play. We're, we're not talking not about, too. again, when we're talking about full range of muscle, full range of movement, we're not it's talking about completely hyperextending the arm. That's where you're running the problem. Mm -hmm. Because the bicep's going to start, stop functioning at this and part. And all the stress goes right on the Right on the tendons and the ligaments. There you the go. last thing you want to be training. Okay, let's go. Drop down just a bit more. There you go. Good. That's it. Let's step. Let's stretch. That's it. Good. Come on out. Out. Back in there. Good. That's it. That's it. That's it. Perfect. Perfect. Come on. Come on. Bring it in. Squeeze. There you go. Bring it in and squeeze. There you go. Squeeze. Come on. Come on. One more. One more. Come on. Bring it in. Bring it in. That's it. Good. Set. All right. What we're going to do now is take it over to the tricep. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to hit more of the in the head. 
So we do a tricep push down, but with a rope. At the end, we're gonna open it up so we get a lot of it out ahead on this here. You got to start out inner, but it goes right to the outer as we push the rope. Okay? Ropes it is. Go. Okay, notice, look at the stand. He's bending at the waist mm -hmm. into the bar. I mean, into the machine itself. This way it allows him to push down and squeeze. If you're standing upright, it'll be dragging along his body, which we don't want. Because now you're getting your shoulders involved. This way we keep the shoulders out. Here we go. Open it at the bottom. Yeah. Really? Turn that wrist. Turn. There you go. That's it. That wrist completely turned over. Come on. Turn over. Good. Do it again. Completely turn it over. Perfect. Come on. Do it again. Turn it over. Good. Give me three. Give me three. Give me two. Come on. Come on. Hold it. There you go. That's it. That's it. That's it. Good. How's it feeling, Adam? Ah, that's how it feels. Pretty good? <laughs> you can hardly speak. Charles, one of the things I notice is with the finesse exercise, you'll tend to burn out a lot quicker. Is that because you are uh, so isolated on a small muscle group that it obviously doesn't have a whole lot of staying power? Well, we isolate it, but we also slow it down. With the bigger muscle group, you know people, they rock right. through it. Right. But I make sure they go a little slower, so where all the tension is where? Right on the muscle. Squeeze. Here we go. Good. Squeeze it down. Perfect. Come on. Come on. Come on. Drop set. Come on. Drop set. Ready? Stop. Easy. Here we go. Now move it nice and slow. There you go. Good. Come on. Slow it down. Good. I need one more, just like that. Just one. Come on. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Turn, turn. That's it. Turn out. Good step. Let's make a fork at him, Charles. He's done. He's cooked. <laughs> Anything more for arms, Charles? That's it for today, because I don't want to destroy it. And, like, and as you said at the top, uh, we don't want to do a whole lot of sets. You know, you're looking at about nine each one, buy some sand, try some tops. Total nine, but sometimes we only end up getting six the way we train muscles. Because we train it very hard, very slow, and it takes a lot more energy to put into that muscle group then than to just fire it off. You get 16, 20 sets that way, but sure. we don't want it that way. We want it to grow without doing a lot of sets. Okay, so we got a little recap then. Uh, we started yeah. out with bias. Yes. Yeah, I like you to start with bias because that's the muscle that people love to train sure. anyway. And a lot of times the triceps are normally a dominant muscle group on a lot of guys. If you ever look, Adam has really good development on his triceps mm -hmm. so I want to pull those biceps up the sure. mat. So that's why I started with bias. And we actually did four sets there so we can get really squeezed in and get that blood gorged in there. And then from there we went to triceps. So we polish it off with another four sets. Then we end up doing three and three. It makes it even because now it's perfect for him because anything more than that is going to destroying. Sure. I like the decline, the decline tricep extension because why? It goes behind the head, it keeps it off the joints, mm -hmm. joint free. Sure. And you don't have to like really grip that bar. You right, can have right. it a lot loose because you use the easy curl bar and have a good natural position and just push through. You know from there we go to what we call a prone curl. But same thing. Legs are way behind you mm -hmm. and we just bring it up easy, keeping the wrist slightly back, sure. keeping it off the forearm and also off the wrist. Now, we drop down lower so we take the shoulders out of the play and everything's on what? The bicep now. Mm -hmm. Just a bicep movement. And by the time we get to that set, I'm telling you, from the prior set, he's dead. Yeah. This right. is the pumping exercise and get more blood into that muscle. Now, we come over to a tricep push downs. Why? Because we're going to feel that outside head where we never hit. So, doing it by with the rope, turning it out, going to really focus on that outside head. It's going to hit it just right. By turning at the bottom, squeezing, it works perfect. Yeah, well, right. arms are looking pumped. Feel good, man. As I say, you know, one thing I've learned from Charles through the years, and I, I always tell my clients the same thing, is that it's not, it's not the quantity, it's the quality. That's what we're going for, and that's why, you know, this is it's amazing how, how much knowledge he has and not pushing you past that, that limit where you're going to get hurt. I feel like just so much blood right now, I don't need to go anymore. It's done. It's over. You know what I mean? I feel good. Time for more food, Adam. That's right. More it's food. It's like the Bob Bowls in uh, your future at the firehouse. <laughs> yeah, let's go back. <laughs> you got it. Well, once again, for Adam Kirby, Super Trainer Charles Glass, I'm Bob Chickarello for Bodybuilding.com, and we'll see you next time on Getting Cut with Glass.